Um, a lot of times when we talk about changes that need to be made, we start talking about when should we make the changes. So one of the things I want to talk about is instead of allowing life to dictate to you, you become the dictator in your life. So a lot of times you know, people say, well, I'm going to wait for this to happen. I'm going to wait to be blessed. I'm going to wait for this to happen. You know, all these great things that I need. And God's going to provide it for me. He'll bring it to me. He'll do this. He'll do that. We don't realize that you already have the gift. You already have a skill set. You just don't know how to use it. And you don't believe in yourself enough. And that's generally those two things are what stop people from growing. Belief and courage. Because that equals faith. Faith is not what you can see. Faith is what you cannot see. And when people are taught about faith and they're taught about, you know, belief and they're taught about courage, they get excited and they say, oh, I understand that. I've seen that before. I know, I know, I know. But when you look at their life, it speaks the polar opposite. It speaks the exact opposite. So it makes you question that person's integrity now. You know, because you start saying either you're a hypocrite or... You just don't know. And either way is not really good. Being a hypocrite is not good because that's knowing the right thing and telling somebody the right thing to do, but then doing something totally opposite, right? And none of us like that when people do that, right? The other thing is not knowing. Okay, somebody says, well, it's okay not to know something. It's okay not to know something until you need it. Because then when you need it, you wish you knew it. So that's life dictating something to you or teaching you. And when life teaches you a lesson, it can be very, very ugly. It can be extremely ugly because life is still a natural occurrence. Things are still gonna happen to people. Um, people are gonna get sick today. You know, Some people are gonna feel great. Some people are gonna love this weather. And some people are gonna hate it. Some people are waiting all winter long for warmer climate, warmer temperatures. But what they didn't think about is the pollen count. So now today they'll complain about the pollen. They'll always find something to complain about. Yes, the pollen, it does get to us. A lot, especially us northerners that didn't deal with it as much. You know, we don't, we're not used to it because we don't have a lot of trees and grass and all that stuff. And then when you come to someone as beautiful as Williamsburg, you have these trees and you have grass and lawns. And, these huge, and, and what makes the lawns and trees beautiful? It comes from the pollen. The pollen is the seeds that allows things to grow. The rain. Somebody say, oh man, it's, ne it's messy out. Why is it messy? Because it's raining. What if it didn't rain? What if it didn't rain and it just stayed warm or hot? Warm turns to hot because there's nothing to cool it off. If something's warm too long, it's uncomfortable. It becomes unbearable. That's why you have people move away from the West Coast to the East Coast. And then you have some people from the East Coast move to the West Coast because they don't like the cold weather. They'll say, I want it to be where it's warm all year long until they live in it. And then they say, well, man, you know, I could take some of the snow. People don't like it when, some people don't like it when it snows. But the snow was so important because of now. See, that's why the four seasons are so important. But in life, there's seasons as well. There's birth. There's, there's learning every day, every minute of the day for a baby to grow. But there's also learning for the parent on how to, you know, take care of a child. So they grow together in a certain capacity until the child grows to adulthood, to maturity. And they don't really reach true maturity until they are set free. Until they can go and move on to their selves. That's when they become a true adult. They can be as big or bigger than the parent, but they're still a child. Because the mind is not ready yet. They haven't been taught how to nurture and, and to overcome obstacles. So that's why you see a lot of times, you know, the best motivational speakers in the world the most successful people in the world have some of the most traumatic stories that you ever heard. The kind that make you cry when you're listening to their upbringing. But the only reason that you cry 
is because it hit a heartstring. It felt terrible for them for that moment. Oh my goodness, that happened to you. Oh my goodness. Instead of looking at the individual now. It's not the destination that's important. It's the journey. The journey creates the destination on both counts. The journey creates a positive destination. If you're positive in mind, body, and soul, spirit. At some point, you don't quit. So at some point, you become successful. You end up getting what you want. Push, 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 push. All of a sudden, the walls cave in. But the same thing on the flip side. On a negative thing, when people are always negative or feeding you negative, negative, negativity in your mind all day, constantly, constantly, constantly. At some point, you think that's normal. And the moment we think that's normal, we begin to accept our circumstances instead of dictating to it, changing it. Everybody that I've ever read about, heard about, listened to speak, has stories similar to my own and similar to yours. The difference is the people that are successful did something to change the outcome. And some, some people just won't. They'll come in. We talk about people that come and go. And like I said, you know, Mises always told me about people, you know, coming into my life for a season. Sometimes just for one moment, just for a fleeting moment. Hey, how you doing? Boom, keep moving and maybe never see them again. But they were meant to see me smile at them or say something to them or them smile at me. Something transferred and we got to take that and keep moving. Because I had, you know, a terrible thing with separation, you know. I don't like to leave people behind. I don't like to see people hurt. I feel like I can change it for them. I can change it for them. I can make it better for them. They're suffering. Let me jump in it with both feet. Let's fix it. Let's fix it. Let's fix it. But unfortunately, like we talk about in some, you know, trainings in the past, some people want to be the victim. They want to be hurt. I know it sounds crazy because... We say to each other, who wants to be hurt? Who actually wants that, right? Well, by verbiage, no one probably will say, I want to be the victim for the rest of my life. But by actions and deeds, it shows more than the words show. Because someone won't go and get better. They just complain about what is on their back. If something's on your back, guess what? We know it's there. It's there. Now, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to sit there and hope it jumps or falls off your back? Or are you going to move and throw it off your back? That, that's just a choice. You know, it's just a choice. I had a conversation with, uh, an, you know, someone that I know. And that person has always been inspired by things I've said, things I've done, I've watched, I've shown them greatness every time they've seen me. They've seen me at upscale, pumped up, enthusiastic. This individual's enthusiastic as well until they hit the walls. And this is where the faith actually has to take over. Faith does not have to take over when things are going well. You just flow. You just go with the flow when things are easy, when things are good. It's when you hit the wall that you need faith to step in front of you and open up a way. These aren't just good words. This is what I live by. You know, I tell people, you know, let's talk about money for a moment. Because that seems to be what everybody's, you know, Achilles heel is. We don't make enough. I don't earn enough. I got, you know, I have to pay my rent. I have a car note. I have this. I have that. Okay, the first thing we have to identify is why do you have these bills? And then once you realize why you have the bills, then you have to ask yourself, how important is it for me to keep this house? How important is it for me to drive this car? How important is it for me to wear these clothes, these name brand sneakers? 
you know, outfits, jewelry. How important is it for me to be seen in a club every Friday night or Saturday? These are the questions that most people don't ask. But these are the situations that put people in the situation they're in. They make the wrong choices. And then when someone says, well, you know, you chose to sleep in that car. I don't choose to sleep in a car. Well, guess what? You're right. That's a choice. I didn't want to sleep in a car. But I also didn't want to go back home and be a burden to my mother. That's important to know. When you do things from your heart, generally people step on you. They take advantage of it. They will. If it's your money, I'm going. If it's mine, I gotta think about it. But I don't have to think about it if you're paid. That's what's wrong with us. It's simple. It's a simple fix. It's just not an easy one. People have to stop being so selfish and greedy. Selfish being it's okay for someone to do for you, but you don't have to put in anything yourself. Greedy being I want yours, 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 and mine. All of our share, as much as I can get. Those two characteristics has America where it is today. Going backwards. The disrespect to the president. The fact that we've always called presidents in the past president such and such. And then you call this president by his first name as if it was a friend of yours in the playground. Respect. Simple. Simple. Critique every little thing he does because you want to make him the, the, the problem. When the problem was what it was before he took office. There's so many people that want to turn it into racial. No, this is not racial. This is life. Whatever president would have been in that White House would have had to deal with the same thing. Because we created it. We talk about the people that we let into the country and run businesses. And not pay taxes and really get them off on their feet. But yet we won't do that for our own. Our own we make suffer, pay taxes. And, and, and it's not just about paying the taxes because I don't have a problem paying taxes. I don't have a problem helping people that are in need. But I do have a problem helping people that don't want to work that are in need and that can work. We have the highest unemployment rate of any, any nation. That's ridiculous. This is the world's richest country. The greediest one as, as well, at the same time. Healthcare. People dying every day just because they can't get the right medicines, the right medications, the right surgery. Now the doctors on the other hand can say, well, you guys are, we're, we're all sue happy. If we do something wrong, we're gonna get sued. So we gotta charge these people like this so we can put this money together and put the insurance together so we can pay these fines when we get sued. Hmm. Over broad, the Medicare is free. They don't make anywhere near the money Americans make, but they do take care of their, their own. If you go over there, you better know how to speak their language. Or you better get a translator or a book that translates. But over here, everything's prompt to someone else's language. If you think about it, you call a place, they say for English, press one. Uh, for Espanol, press two. Right? I'm not saying it shouldn't be that way. I'm just saying it's not hard to see why we're in so much turmoil. We're always involved in somebody else's affairs. And then we don't take care of our own home. That's how 9-11 happened. We have presence in the Middle East forever. I've been there in Desert Storm. I know what it looks like over there. I know how they treat us over there. I know they don't want us over there. But we're there anyway. Meanwhile, we allow the wolf to sneak in to our barn and destroy our livestock. 
while we were over there. Simple to understand. It's not easy to change. 